So if you watched the U.S. Open this year, you likely saw this commercial. It's a Morgan Stanley commercial with Leila Fernandez. And um, it's just basically this commercial where she's playing, and then the line, lines disappear, and then a bunch of like, girls run out of the court. And it's like a promotion for Morgan Stanley partnering with the WTA to remove Boundaries, which is the name of the commercial, Boundaries. And it does seem just like a nice idea, and you know, it looks like, as you can see here, all the girls going out to play tennis just seems good. And so if you go to that link at the end, it kind of takes you to a page describing what the, the partnership's all about and uh, whatnot. And basically, uh, the boundaries they seek to erase, or what the goals of the partnership are, are to get girls in underserved communities into tennis, which is good. The other one is to get more women into coaching tennis, which is nice as, like, if you watch any pro tennis, most coaches are men, even um, uh, women's players. Their coaches tend to be men. I don't know what the numbers are. But, yeah, it's a, it's a good initiative. And the last one is, like, teaching pro tennis players finances or financial stuff and, like, investing, and which is kind of... It's like fair enough. Um, I think there's a quote from Layla on the webpage where it's like, uh, you know, after tennis, we don't really have a backup plan or something like this, which is interesting. And so then the question is like, how could anyone disagree with these goals? And like, why would I uh, title this a warning to the WTA? And so like, obviously there are anti-woke dorks. Like, I think that YouTube video has 12,000 views and one, one, one guy commented, about the Bud Light marketing exec, or VP or whatever, ended up at Morgan Stanley because he thinks it's like too woke or something, which is corny and wrong, and it's not what I'm saying. So then the question is like, what am I warning the WTA about? And so it's like a little digression. It's it's all about like partnering with Morgan Stanley, and um, the the digression is we're just gonna quickly go into go back to 2008, and we're going to be talking about the Chicago Park, Parking Company LLC, which if you've ever been to Chicago, these are the parking meters all around the city, you'd recognize this logo. Um, yeah, it's just parking around Chicago. So in 2008, the U.S. economy crashed, right? I, I hope that's not news to anybody. It's the Great Recession. Chicago's hit as hard as anywhere else, if not harder, just because it, it's like a financial capital. Um, and then these industrious cats from Morgan Stanley, these business people, those aren't, these aren't actually the business people that made the deal, but it's just to give you an idea of business people. Um, and they pitched like this sort of deal to the city of Chicago, who's, you know, down on their luck, because obviously you would be, and you're worried about a lot of things. I think one thing they're specifically worried about is like pensions and whatnot. And so they're looking for a way that they can like keep the city afloat, and especially people with pension plans and whatnot. And so the deal is loosely this, uh, it's $1.15 $1 billion for a private company to operate Chicago's parking meters, and then of course take the profits um, that might consequence, or like might become of obviously people paying for parking around the city of Chicago. And so the deal is essentially like a lease, so they're not really selling the parking meters, but for the next 75 or 99 years, I'm pretty sure it's 75, um, some private company would own these would own these parking meters and then obviously reap, reap the profits as well as have to um, operate and maintain these parking meters which is like lifting a financial burden off the city of Chicago um, and that's also not a guy that works for Morgan Stanley I should point out as far as I know um, and then this is from an Atlantic article but so the city of Chicago is like deciding whether or not they should sell the parking meter system. Morgan Stanley, who's like brokering the deal essentially, um, is making plans to offload the parking meters to a third party, right? And so the city of Chicago doesn't really know this, but Morgan Stanley's like, oh, well, we could make some money off of this. So they're looking for other people that might want to buy in. And then Chicago eventually comes to this conclusion, which I scrolled down a little bit too soon, but basically they decide, yes, we'll sell you on a 75-year lease, we're going to sell you these, uh, I think it's 36,000 parking meters for about $1.15 billion, um, and nobody really knows who's behind the deal, but it's going to help with, like, it's going to help the city stay afloat in this financial crisis, right? And then it turns out Morgan Stanley did seek out these other investors, 
and uh, this is from their YouTube page. But it turns out these investors were a bunch of guys from the Abu Dhabi Investment Authority um, who agreed to purchase this really large stake in uh, in the what's it called the um, Chicago Parking Company LLC or whatever it is. But the point is, it's just like the strangest thing is that now these these dudes in Abu Dhabi just like <laughs> own a large share of parking in Chicago. And so it's strange to like have people that don't even live in the city have so much stake in like the city's parking and whatnot. And so as you can imagine, this hasn't really turned out well for the city of Chicago. Um, basically in the first, what is that, 14 years since 2008, they made back their investment plus $500 million. And they, they have another 61 years, essentially, of, like, pure pure profits. So really not great for the city of Chicago. Um, and on top of them missing out on whatever this revenue would be, um, it's hard for them to make improvements. So, like, any time, let's say, like, uh, you were to host a um, uh, block party in just your neighborhood in Chicago, uh, if you cut into the parking meter times you would the city would have to pay like a, a true up payment um, for any profits that the uh, the parking company may have <laughs> may have lost as a consequence of you having a parking company or a, a parking company as a, uh, a block party and so it's tough and it's like hard to make improvements as well like I think it, there was a biking plan there's a plan to make bike lanes and because it would cut into the profits um, the city would, on top of having to pay for, like, bike lanes and that infrastructure improvement, they would also have to pay for the true-up stuff, right? They'd have to pay for all the profits that Chicago Parking Meters LLC would have lost, uh, which isn't great if you want biking lanes in Chicago. If you don't, it's good, I suppose, if you want to keep it parking stuff. Um, and so, yeah, it's understandable why they sold them, but definitely not great, right? Like, in theory, they offload the maintenance and operation, which is you lose the cost, but then you end up losing like all this money that people are paying for parking. So yeah, bad thing, bad deal. And it's a deal that Morgan Stanley brokered um, and then sold to uh, these folks in Abu Dhabi. And uh, they've all made a lot of money off of it. And the only people that really suffer are Chicagoans and like the city in general. Um, then the question is like who cares like why bring this in with the WTA and that boundary commercial which is you can see Layla and the the girls in the backgrounds and I think it's just like an example of be careful who you partner with um, if somebody's like promising utopic futures right shy was looking to load off the burden of the parking meters and whatnot and then also have some um, liquid cash to help with their situation and then it's ultimately just unloaded or offloaded the profits and whatnot and like benefits that would have come to taxpayers and city residents as a result and so the point being the WTA should maybe keep an eye on uh, Morgan Stanley um, and I don't actually really know like what the details are of their relationship but it's just with this in mind it's like something you want to keep an eye on right um, and this is one of their goals, I think, help provide new opportunities for a new generation through empowerment programs for players, coaches, and, coaches and communities, which just, like, sounds nice, but you never know, like, what their goals might be underneath it. Like, maybe they're just trying to develop a relationship, or maybe they truly do care about women's tennis and, like, girls getting into tennis, but I'm not uh, so sold on that. And another thing just to keep in mind is, like, this whole live golf deal. And, right, the idea that um, I think the PGA guy uh, said they would never sign a deal with the Live Golf um, folks, and then eventually he said they signed the deal, and uh, the PGA is now it's either partnered or merged with Live Golf, and it's going to be Live Golf. And there's this nice little bit. The commissioner said he had a deal, uh, said that he spent the last few weeks trying to convince players about the value of the deal to them and the PGA Tour saying multiple saying a months long legal conflict between the Tour and Live Golf posed existential risk 
according to the Wall Street Journal. And so, who knows how that existential risk came to be. Um, yeah, and so I'm just saying, WTA should keep an eye on Morgan Stanley. You don't want to get into, like, an existential arm bar um, or whatever with seemingly good deals. Uh, Morgan Stanley's kind of out to make money more than anything. Um, they're not really in the business of improving tennis for girls. They're in the business of making money. So I think it's important to think about ends when you think about why they might be doing this. Uh, yeah, what do we have here? Legal bits keep the city of Chicago paying troops on top of... Yeah. Yeah, I, I mean, that's nice. It's just a nice little bit to throw in. Oh, and I'd like to thank the sponsor of this video, uh, Park, Park Chicago LLC. You can use the code AUTONELSON um, at any two-hour parking spot, at any Park Chicago LLC meter um, for 15% off the two hours. And then lastly, I'd like to just congratulate Coco Goff on the big win. Uh, let's go American Tennis. Oh, the sources.